Okay, so welcome to Secret of the Houses, um, and we're doing the um, fifth house today, which is pretty exciting. It's actually the best house of all. It doesn't have any Bodica influence. It usually doesn't get lost in any any problems in the chart. So it's really the best house. It just never has, so, you know. Um, so it's really kind of exciting. Uh, so let's start with some chanting. Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganapatiye Namaha, Om Ganapatiye Namaha, Om Ganapatiye Namaha, Vakratunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samabraha, Nirvigyam Kurame Deva, Sarva Karishu, Sarvada, Sahana Vavatu, Sahano Bunaktu, Sahaviryam karva bahai tejasvina vatita mastu ma vivishai bahai om shanti 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 om aditaya somaye mangale budaye cha guru shukra shani bhischa rakhuve ketave namaha jnana mulam guru murti puja mulam guru padam Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam Guru Kripa. And then honoring Krishna, Saraswati, Veda Vyasa, who wrote down the Vedas and the Holy Traditions of Masters, which is part of my lineage. <clears throat> honoring my Jyotish teachers, uh, who've influenced me the most Sanjay Roth, Camilla Sutton, Bill Levisi, Prashtravedi, Pandit Ocha. And welcome to Cole today from London, two days in a row. You, know, you guys are real troopers. I mean, I'm teaching two days in a row, which is a lot, and you guys are taking classes two days in a row, which is still really great. Um, Christine, I'm not sure. She's still in the Philippines. Jamie's house sitting. Um, I know she told me she wouldn't come today. Sonora's here from Mumbai. Um, Meg, I'm not sure what's going on. Kathy's here today. Um, John likes to listen to recordings. Um, Alexander, I haven't heard from. Ellen, um, I don't know what's going on with Ellen. Maybe she'll come today. Charlene um, usually comes in, um, when Wu Sheng is sleeping in Taiwan. Rashmi, I'm not sure what has happened to Rashmi. Um, Vikas was there this morning, so he may have other responsibilities this afternoon. Andrew is always doing service work um, at the ashram on Sundays. So, okay, so um, they were doing the fifth house. Next week um, we're going to do the sixth and the tenth houses. I don't. I have to figure out what to do. Um, we have had a tape on the sixth house already, but again, the sixth house is kind of like the eighth and the twelfth, and we really need to spend more time on it. So I'm going to. Um, expand my sixth house tape because it really kind of needs to be expanded. Now, chances are that will mean the 10th house may go into part of the next week. I'll see if I can at least start it next week. Um, and the sixth house and the 10th house go together. They're both kind of connected to work, work and status. So, um, and we'll try to bring in uh, maybe a little bit of the D10 also uh, when we do the 10th house because you always have to um, look at that when you're doing career and you end up using that one so much. So um, and the final week, you know, is kind of a class integration week and we will finish class on the 18th, um, two weeks from today. Um, okay. Um, Vikas is here. Okay. Great, Vikas. Good to see you. Um, here we go. Okay, the Almanac is still, it's coming out on Amazon this week. If those of you who have been waiting for a hard copy, uh, it's more money and it's black and white. The color copy is downloadable on my website if you haven't picked one up. It's my pride and joy. I, I never understand why authors spent so much time talking about their books, but it, it's really kind of um, like a child. You know, Ninth House is, is a child, actually, Fifth and Ninth. Um, so it, it really is a child, and, and um, so I, 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 I spent all um, a month or so giving birth, and so now we have to celebrate. Um, the Vedic Remedies course is starting um, 
in a couple of weeks, there was a preview. If you're interested um, in the videotape, um, I can send a copy to it. We just recorded it. Um, I'm kind of excited about it. I think we're going to turn that um, Vedic Remedies course into three three blocks of um, six-week classes, and um, I think it's going to be very exciting because it's such a rich area. Again, you, it's like it's pre-med. I think we're going through with with the remedies class, and then then we can start maybe the beginning year of medical school in part two. Um, now, chapter course coming up March 4th, um, such a rich area, some, some people don't know too much about it. Um, and then conferences, um, the Baba Conference in London is really, um, if, you're, if you're nearby, and I know Nicole is, um, it's a wonderful conference to go to. Um, I, I'm, I haven't bought my plane ticket, I, I'm, I really want to go, I just have to kind of finalize housing, which is actually more expensive than playing for these days. Um, and this year's conference is on doshas. And um, the interesting thing of all the conferences, the Baba courses is the best because it has the deepest knowledge. It's always very advanced knowledge because Sanjay Roth always comes and gives these great talks and he's doing a couple day workshop on doshas. So um, if you like to travel, um, Baba is it's a really great group. I've, I've been part of Baba since 2006. Um, and then um, I will be speaking at the United Astrology Conference in May, um, um, which, um, and they have a Vedic track. So um, um, you, you, I, I really like Western astrologers, and, and I think you learn a lot from them, but um, they do have a whole Vedic track, and there's a lot of people going to be there. So anyway, save your shekels. Um, good. So let's go to today's talk. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Welcome, Charlene, and um, good to have you here. I thought you might have gotten a, uh, hijacked into a Super Bowl party, but I'm glad glad you're here with us. Um, just a second. One more second, the uh, vegetable timer is beeping in the background. Okay, I'm back. I'm really sorry. I just suddenly, all the sound went off at the moment because we're recording. I just didn't want it to be in the recording. Um, okay, so um, we're doing Secrets of the Fifth House, which I said is my favorite house. And the subtitle of today's talk is Expressing Our Passion and Enthusiasm. And um, the, the Fifth House is so interesting because of, um, you know, everybody wants to talk about it because, uh, because it's connected to children but it's really so much more we're going to do some really deep thinking about the fifth house today um remember the fifth house is the third of our dharma houses um and so it is connected to spiritual initiations and mantras and and it, it it's one of the houses um, of the best houses that leads us on the path to civilization um So let's let's give our kind of general introduction to the fifth house. The fifth house is a house of creativity, expression of love and passion. Um, can we discover our wild spirit that lets out the joy of being in the moment and truly live our life with passion? So um, um, I think 
what, what I've been trying to do with the with the houses class is try to bring in all these kind of themes that come together. And creativity is, um, and passion and enthusiasm are really the three key words for the fifth house. And it's very connected to what we love to do most. And so um, it's, it's often it's thought of about, um, you know, often sports are connected to it and things like that, because it, it's about, it's a Jupiter, it's, it's connected to Jupiter, but it's all about um, expressing our joy and enthusiasm. And so anything that allows that to come out is connected to the fifth house. Um, you know, when the fifth house is block, block, let's say the Lord of the fifth is in the sixth house or something like that, then our kind of our passion is kind of stuck in everyday work. And, and we have no passion for life. So that's one of the more difficult placements. But um, so, so if you see a block to the fifth house, it's very kind of key to unlocking for somebody's life. Because if you can unblock the fifth house, then suddenly their whole life opens up. And that, it, that's why it's so key. It's a very key point in the chart. Um, so we don't want the Lord of the fifth connected to the 6th, the 8th, or the 12th house, or to Saturn or Ketu, because then that kind of blocks our joy and our self-expression, and it impacts our income and our relationships. Um, um, Barry, I can't seem to be seeing your screen. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, um, this has been kind of a technological wonder here. Thank you for letting me know. Um, um, I'll go back. So again, since... Now it's good, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, maybe we should just start again. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, but anyway, so we're doing this, the fifth house again, expressing our passion and our enthusiasm. And um, it's a Dharma house. So it's connected to the mind and wisdom and to creativity and what moves our spirit. Um, um, it's the most, it's the house of creativity. So the three key words to remember for the fifth house, again, are creativity, enthusiasm, what we truly love in life, what we have a passion for. And, and so when the fifth house is blocked by malefics like Saturn or Ketu, um, it, it's kind of our, our whole life force is blocked, our whole essence of, of what makes us tick is, is kind of blocked. Um, you know, the fifth house is a lot about fun in a sense, because, you know, it's often about artistic expression. If Venus is there, you know, you, you may be involved in dance or playing an instrument. It's, it's very connected to how we express our joy and what we feel most passionate about. And when you ask people what they like to do most, you know, it's, it's often connected to the signs and the planets and the nakshatras that are going on in the fifth house and where the fifth house Lord is. And, and if there are blocks to that, and if you can help release them, then you really kind of open up their life. It's connected to kind of romance um, and to the joy and love that we find in, 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 in through our children. Um, again, it's the things. It's connected to the things that we love most. Um, if 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 the fifth house is connected to the fire signs, particularly like Sagittarius or Aries rising, then then there's a deep passion for sports and competition. And you find sports enthusiasts. If you look at athletes' house, it's, the athletes' lives are all about the fifth house. It's about kind of the joy of of the game. The game is a kind of a key word for the fifth house, the sport. Um, and, you know, people spend mil billions of dollars on sports. I mean, we've got the Super Bowl today, you know, billions of dollars. I don't know if it's billions, but, you know, it's so much money is going into that event because people love to watch athletes give 100% on the playing field with joy and enthusiasm running around doing what they love most, which is playing a game. And, and, and we spend thousands of dollars, people spend thousands of dollars to buy Super Bowl tickets to, to watch them. So that's because there's a lot of passion in the fifth house. It's about sports. It's about games. Um, um, children uh, are very connected to the fifth house. 
Um, and in a sense, children are also about play. And when we have children, you know, especially before they get too old, you know, there, there's incredible joy. We learn so much from our children because they know how to play. They know how to be enthusiastic. They know how to express love um, and joy before responsibility takes over. And so, again, children are an expression of love and enthusiasm also. Um, again, I mentioned artistic expression is an important part of the fifth house, uh, particularly for Geminis or Capricorns, where um, Taurus and Libra become the fifth house owner. And so uh, when you see that combination, you know, you if, if they have lots of their artistic creativity, you've got to get them pursuing their art. Um, I once took a, a course from Julia Cameron, who wrote a book called The Artist's Way, and it's about unlocking uh, artistic blocks and creativity. And it's a very powerful course, and, and you know, she teaches a lot of principles that sometimes you just have to do new things. You have to take a walk in a new neighborhood, go to a new restaurant, visit, do something you've never done before to kind of create that sense of excitement and something new. And, and that's what the fifth house is all about. It's about doing things in a new way. Um, we, sometimes we just need to walk on the wild side, go to a new restaurant, uh, break out of the box of our routine to kind of start living the joy in the moment. Um, again, children are a natural expression of the fifth house. Their naturalness and, and, and their natural play, you know, inspires us to discover our own lost innocence. Um, so Jupiter is the secret of the fifth house because it's the character. And one of the things that we've learned in the houses class is that if, you know, that we always have to look at the karka. If the karka isn't working, then the house isn't working usually on some level. And, and if we can find ways to get the karka working, by doing things connected to the karka, then we can enliven what's missing. Um, and you know, Jupiter, you know, Jupiter is, is in some ways also about play. We need creative therapy of theater, learning a new musical instrument, getting into community team sports to unleash fun and passion. And, and when these things are blocked, there's a certain joy and 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 passion that's lost in our life. And so, you need to help people unlock their passion and to find that. Um, Romance is another key aspect of the fifth house, an adventure too. Um, 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 you know, you get Mars connected to the fifth house, and you get these people that have to kind of go on, you know, climb mountains and discover, you know, um, uh, to discover themselves. Um, uh, romance becomes a, an obsession with many people um, because love and, and passion are such an important part of our life. And so, without Without the fifth house working, without passion and enthusiasm and love working, you know, our life is pretty, pretty, pretty dull. Um, and there's even a connection between, you know, the fifth house is a very spiritual house, which is what we started out talking about. And, and spirituality, um, because it's the house of mantras. And, um, and, and it's in, in meditation that we discover our romance with the divine and discover our true nature. So, um, when people have blocks to spiritual experience, um, you have to look at the fifth house and see what's afflicted and what's blocking them from meditation or spiritual practice. Um, um, because if we find the joy of meditation, um, it also it releases a lot of inner passion and enthusiasm in our life. Um, Investment is connected to the fifth house. Gambling is a lower aspect of investment. You know, gambling is going to be Rahu. Investment is more Jupiter. And and those of you who took my uh, money karma class, you know, we had a whole hour and a half discussion of the fifth house and its connection to trading. And um, I'm not going to repeat that here. Um, but 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 I work with traders, and you know, when you talk to them. They're, they're obsessed. This is their passion, the passion to make money, the passion to find creative ways to make money with their investments. And they spend all their time and money and big money to learn how to do this. And then obviously we have, you know, the world of casinos, which is the Rahu gambling den. Um, and now we have Bitcoin, which is kind of on that same level where people just, um, you know, pour tons of money into to to these these activities because the fifth you know the excitement of the game is all about what the fifth house is about 
Um, and, and people, you know, drop all kinds of money in Las Vegas and they don't care if they lose because they need that joy and enthusiasm that comes with the fifth house. But with Rahu, it can lead to gambling addictions and obsessions. Um, um, we talked about mantras. Um, so the ultimate calling of the fifth house, you know, because it's a Dharma house, is to move us back to the divine and unlock our own divine creativity so that we can transform humanity with our love. So that's really the, the deepest um, secret of the fifth house. It's really, when it, you know, encouraging people to move towards spiritual initiation and um, to um, experience their own inner divinity and, and to discover their, the love that's with inside themselves, which is why we're here on the planet. So, um, and Leo is the natural fifth sign of the zodiac, a place of divine love uh, and a place of the heart. And, and if we don't unlock that divine love within us, then we really suffer. Our talents and passion are not expressed and our, and our inner child dies. Um, so we've talked about all these things already. Um, uh, leadership is another key word for the fifth house because Leo is um, connected to leadership. The king, the son is the king, the leader. Um, and so um, strong fifth house can mean that you have good management abilities, good leadership abilities. Um, the, um, it's also, the fifth house is connected to, to past life credit. Um, it's, um, um, it's because we did good in past lives that if we have a good fifth house now, we're reaping the rewards of what we've done in the past. And, and, and that's called Purva Punya. Um, you know, in terms of the chakra system, the crown chakra is the sun and it's connected to uh, the crown chakra connects to the heart, to the, you know, the lion heart. And, and, and so the, the divine energy pours down through the crown chakra. And that's why the fifth house is so important for connecting to the divine and to mantras and to, um, um, to spiritual practice. Um, so let's get back to some, some basics here. Um, I, I, some, I put these laundry lists out there just because you have them for future references. So um, the, the Sanskrit name for the fifth house is called Putra Bhava. Um, again, it's, it's primarily connected to Jupiter, which is children and wisdom. And wisdom is, is a very key word for, for the fifth house. And we'll talk um, probably for about 15 minutes about that because it's such an important part of the fifth house. Um, um, there are no planets that don't mark a Karakastana for the fifth house. So um, everybody's happy. And, you know, people, I wouldn't say every planet's happy in the fifth house, but the fifth house generally kind of does uplift every planet, even if a malefic may, may harm it a little bit. Um, and, and remember, we learned the rule of Karaka Baba Nacha, that you don't want to put a planet in its Karaka house. So Jupiter... Um, in the fifth house, you would think, oh, wonderful placement. It, you know, if it's got dignity, it may be okay, but it may it may actually create children. I think I mentioned my mom has an exalted Jupiter in the fifth house, um, and um, her first child, which is the fifth house, was was a stillborn. So, you know, that was kind of a a, 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 a funny thing. You would just, you know, if you're looking at somebody's chart, you say, oh my God, you're going to have this amazing first child. Well. It didn't, it didn't come through, um, and it was very devastating. But um, that's kind of a funny thing that Jupiter can do in the fifth house sometimes. Pavat Pavam, fifth from the fifth is the ninth. Again, the whole thing we've been doing for the last three weeks is the trinal houses are all connected. Uh, natural fifth house, Leo, we've talked about. Um, the Varga for the fifth house um, is the Saptamcha, the D7. And... We probably need a whole two hours to talk about predicting children, and I've had to deliberately leave it out because um, we're doing more spiritual and, and, and um, psychological astrology in, in this course. And um, um, you do get questions about how to predict children. Um, I, I'll give you some reference articles on them, but 
um, I really need like a whole two hours to kind of spend time with that, which we don't have. Um, the fifth house is also connected to the Ishta Devata. Now, in the multi-dimensions course, we, when we learned the Karakumpta Navamsha class, uh, uh, we learned that there's a special deity that guides you, you to enlightenment. And you can, you can see this in the um, rotated Navamsha chart in the 12th house, uh, which we, we learned about. And you can also, you should first, you know, everything is always in the Rashi, so you always almost have to look in the Rashi first. And so, um, um, you know, planets in the fifth house um, and the owner of the fifth house in the secondary way will kind of show you the 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 deity that you're connected with on a spiritual level. So um, the sun is, um, and there's some some different interpretations of that. Usually the sun is not Vishu, but the sun is connected to Shiva, um, the moon to uh, Saraswati or Parvati. Um, The Mars is connected to Hanuman or Murgahan, um, Mercury connected to Vishnu, Jupiter connected to Brahma, Indra, and also the Sun, um, also to Shiva. Um, Jupiter is also very connected to Shiva. Uh, Laksh Venus is, of course, connected to Lakshmi, uh, Saturn to um, Saturn is really not connected to Shiva. It's really connected more to Vishnu. This is an old list. Um, I have I, there's a lot of um, different interpretations of this. Um, Rahu is connected to Durga and Ketu connected to Ganesha. So um, this is a more definitive list. I'll, in the revised slideshow, I'll send this to you. Um, so planets, um, if you have these planets in your fifth house, you may have more connection with those deities, and they, those deities may guide you more in your spiritual path. And then you look in the Nabamsha chart also, and we learn that. I'm not going to go over that again, but this is kind of a survey. Um, children, you know, we have to talk about children a little bit. Um, so the fifth house um, will tell us something about your ability to have children. Your, re your relationship with your children is also reflected in, in this house. Um, your eldest, your eldest child is going to be your fifth house. Um, the seventh house represents your second child. The ninth house, your third child. The eleventh house, the fourth child. I, there's some disagreements. I, I usually use, use the ninth house for the, sec, the, the second child, but and the eleventh house for the third child. But um, I put that down here. Um, um, Mars, Saturn, Sun, Rahu, Ketu, and Mercury in the fifth house can create problems in childbirth if there's no dignity and they're badly afflicted. Moon and the Venus, and Moon and Venus um, particularly will grant children. And then we said Jupiter is kind of a funny case because it's Karkababo Nacho. I mean, it 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 will bring it will bring children. It may bring problems with the first child being in the fifth house. Um, so the aspect of Jupiter to the fifth house or its ruler is better than Jupiter placed in the fifth house. So we, we just we learned that already. Um, um, if Jupiter is in the fifth house and there are other malefic aspects of the fifth house, then there may be problems with childbirth or loss of the first child. But it, you know the, um, the the rules about children. Um, you know you really we, like I said we really need a two hour talk on this because. Um, there are all these exceptions and rule, you know, in Jyotish, you know, in some ways we end up always doing a survey course because, um, you know, you, we could spend three weeks on children, you know, just, um, and, and sometime we will, but, but it, it's, um, so you have to be careful when you just throw out things casually. I mean, sometimes, you know, um, I mean, sometimes I throw out things casually and I'm right. Somebody has Rahu in the fifth house and it's afflicted. You know, I say that they they may have had an abortion or a miscarriage, and and you're or you know or Mars in in the in the fifth house abortion or miscarriage. You're going to be right almost all the time, but but you still kind of need to learn those kind of rules. Um, mental capacity is connected to the fifth house. We're going to spend about 15 minutes talking about this because the fifth house is connected to judgment, intellect, and wisdom. And those are all important qualities of Jupiter. How 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 is our ability to integrate the world 
um, around us. Um, the fifth house we'll learn is connected to IQ, how we learn from our experience. Um, um, and but when we're ever we're looking at a person's mental makeup, we have to look at the first. We have to look at the moon and Mercury and their afflictions. We have to look at the first and the fourth house. The fourth house is the mind. It's the conscious mind. And the fifth house kind of integrates the experience of the conscious mind through discrimination and good judgment. Um, we'll talk more about that. Um, here's your laundry list of all the things that you could talk about for the fifth house. We've mentioned most of them. Um, um, ones that didn't come up, uh, adultery, <laughs> rape, <laughs> you get a badly afflicted abortion are kind of the negatives of the, of the fifth house if you get really uh, afflicted problems. Um, body parts listed here, health issues, um, can be heart problems. Uh, I mentioned heart is sometimes looked at both in the fourth and the fifth house. I, I, I always get confused, but the right side of the heart may be the fourth house and the left side of the house may be the fifth house. And I, I may have gotten those backwards, but you know, when people have heart problems, it's usually it's like one side of the heart goes out and, and you can see that in the chart because you need to look at the heart in the fourth and the fifth house. Um, uh, career options for the fifth house, authors, actors, sportsmen, astrologers, entertainers, ministers, publications, uh, careers in the leisure industry, entertainment industry. Um, Those are, again, the dark side of the fifth house. If you, I probably should pull up Lindbergh's chart. You know, obviously there's a very famous case of Charles Lindbergh's child being adopted, abducted. It'd be interesting to see what kind of affliction there is in his fifth house. But I don't, you know, we don't like to predict these. I mean, how often do children get kidnapped? Um, I mean, so when you're doing most people's charts, you don't really need to know that. But just be aware that that you know it can happen if you really have a bad affliction to Jupiter or the fifth house, probably connected to Rahu. Um, so the fifth house again, we talked about spiritual unfoldment, religious practice, bhakti devotion, spiritual practice, meditation. If somebody has trouble with meditation, you're going to be looking at the fifth house. Um, Okay, basic activities of the fifth house, um, expressing our heart's desire, um, um, teaching or, or learning what we love to do, creating art, um, according to the one we love, romance, piano lessons, playing an instrument, giving an astrology reading, doing a healing session. These are all kind of fifth house activities. Um, the environment of the fifth house is the classroom, the recording studio, the floor of the stock exchange, a uh, child's musical recital. Those are all possible kind of places of the fifth house. Objects of the fifth house are connected to sacred books, prayer beads, musical instruments, art supplies, religious statues, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, let me, um, that's my monologue here. Um, let me just, um, have any questions, take any questions here. Um, I really tried to integrate a lot of deep material in that 20 minute talk for you. Um, and again, I, I throw a lot at, at you and, and it takes time to integrate it. But I, I mean, the key words to remember about the fifth house are passion, love, enthusiasm, um, creative expression, and then mental um, acuity, ability to kind of judge uh, life. And we're spending a lot of time talking about that because I think we have to, we really have, we really need to help people with that. And you get a lot of people that just can't discriminate, you know, very well. They don't have good judgment and they make mistakes in their lives and then their lives become a mess. So uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on that in a minute. Any questions? Uh, I do, Barry. Um, regarding Jupiter um, as the natural character for um, the fifth house or whatever. So um, for a Leo ascendant, where the ninth house would be ruled by Sagittarius, I believe. Um, if Jupiter, let's say, was aspecting that house and also being the ruler of that fifth house, that could also impact the possibility of having children. I just, I was curious. Right. Okay. So the, the rule for a Leo rising is... Um, 
um, because Jupiter is Mula Katruna, which means has a lot of strength and power. It's almost exalted, connected to Sagittarius. Because it owns the fifth house, its eighth house qualities are, are kind of diminished. So they're not, a, a, it's not a problem. I mean, there, we actually learned when we did the eighth house, there are a lot of eighth house cancellations. And when we get down to it, you know, it's almost like Virgo's with Aries and Mars only in the eighth house have the most problem with the eighth house. But there's so many exceptions to eighth houses being okay. And, and that's a case where, you know, Jupiter generally causes good things and Jupiter owning the fifth and the eighth um, for Leos is, is, is not a problem. So it, it's not gonna have an affliction. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a good question. It's something I should have been covered more in the interp in the interpretation lessons that we did earlier in the year, but um, the, the funny one with the Mueller with that rule is is um, um, Virg is um, uh, Libra. Mercury owns the ninth and the twelfth, and be, um, and it turns out the twelfth is the Mueller Chakuna sign. So it's actually when you get these joint houses, it's Libras that have the most trouble with that joint ownership and the 12th house problems do come out for Libras because, because um, um, uh, Merc Mercury um, is stronger in Virgo than Gemini. So, but most of the other joint houses where it owns the fifth and the eighth or the sixth and the ninth, um, um, there's not a problem. And, and the, the exception is Libra. So Mercury has a problem. Uh, Mercury is not, it, normally you would think Mercury is a great planet for Libra, but it has, a, has this mixed energy because of um, the 12th house ownership. Okay. Barry, I have another question about Jupiter in the fifth. So let's say Jupiter is in the fifth, uh, granted that it's the Bhava, it's the Karaka, so it's too much gun, like you had uh, indicated in the previous session lessons. So now, does that impact uh, mainly children, or it impacts negatively impacts basically children, or or does it impact the other uh, uh, characteristics or the uh, karakas for other characteristics of the fifth house, like joy, enthusiasm, self-expression, creativity? Yeah, you know, um, I, it's one of those things that we need to get a lot of case studies for. Um, my experience with it is, um, I. I I don't know if you were around when we did the lesson on Karaka Baba Nacha, but um, if if Jupiter has dignity, then then a, much of the Karaka Baba Nacha is is negated. Um, so it, it, if if you have like Jupiter in Capricorn or Jupiter in Taurus or Jupiter in Libra in the fifth house, then then it's it's much more problematic as Karaka Baba Nacha. Than it is if you know if it's you know it's got more dignity in Pisces or Sag. I think um, um, you know w when I've looked at, at this issue with Karakabalo Nacha, um, 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 there are subtle ways that it creates problems. You know, I mean, um, I have a friend who has like a really strong exalted Jupiter that's a little bit kind of malefic, and she. She, she's kind of a notable all, and, and she actually everything she says is absolutely pure wisdom and pure, um, 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 you know, great knowledge, you know, with the exalted Jupiter. And, and yet I want to run away screaming when I talk to her because her attitude has this kind of know-it-all arrogant energy to it. So there, there may be subtle ways that, that it's tainted, that the Karka values are tainted. You know, and, and you can't, you know, and it, it always boils down to, you know, when I said reading strands of DNA. So you have to look at the Navamsha chart and you have to look at, at you know, uh, some of the things that we've learned about, you know, how many houses it travels in the, in the Navamsha chart from the Rashi chart. And then you have to look at the deity in the D60. And, and ultimately, you know, it's, you know, you, we, we teach generalities in Jyotish, but we still have to kind of go back to, you know, learning how to read DNA strands, which is tricky, you know. Good question. D did I answer it because? Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. Um, 
So, um, um, so this is some more advanced material on the fifth house that usually is not taught. And um, um, so, first of all, one of the rules that we learned with house study is that whenever you're studying the house, you always have to study the the natural house, and remember that there's a connection between the natural houses of the zodiac and the house itself. So if we're looking at the fifth house, we have to look at Leo. It's the natural fifth sign of the zodiac. If we're looking at um, the ninth house, we have to look at Sagittarius because it's the natural ninth house of the zodiac. So if, um, if both the fifth house and Leo have weakness in them, then the native will have low life energy, lack of optimism, inability to take control over one's life. There'll be problems with depression. Because, you know, uh, sun is all about confidence and optimism. And if there are afflictions on um, the fifth house and to Leo, then, then there's no kind of life energy. Their, their enthusiasm and their optimism is this kind of squash. And you have to give them remedies to boost the sun, you know, Gayatri Mantra is absolutely an obvious, is an obvious one, but that needs to be initiated into. But there are things like the sun that needs to be kind of elevated. Um, when you get a strong fifth house um, and a strong Leo, then, the, then there's a lot of vital energy, a lot of leadership energy, a lot of magnetism, and the ability to impose one's creativity on others. Um, so the key remedy, um, you know, um, with the fifth house is that you have to find ways to get them into their passion and to uplift their enthusiasm. And there are different ways to do this, but but if they if they if they can't do that, then they get lost in in depression and um, and and you know their whole life energy goes downhill. Um, the fifth house is really kind of about consciousness in a sense. Um, the, the fourth house is, is the mind, and the fifth house kind of integrates the thoughts and the emotions that flow through the fourth house, through the mind. Um, and um, it, it's interesting, wherever uh, the fifth house lord goes, our attention tends to go there. So if the fifth house is, um, uh, I'll use an example, if you've got Mars in the fifth house, Mars is malefic in the fifth house. It actually Mars is a celibate by nature, and it will squash romance. Where Venus in the fifth house will spark romance. So um, planets in the in the fifth house will kind of influence the energy of the fifth house for creating uh, enthusiasm or diminishing enthusiasm in that area. Um, Planets in the fifth house will modify the nature of the of the mind. So, um, and that the, the thing that I, I really want to dwell on now, which we're going to spend about ten minutes on, is is that um, our mind um, is, is very connected to the fifth house. The fourth house is is mind, but it's 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 the fifth house is kind of um, how we integrate the fourth house energy and and. The, 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 fifth, the planets in the fifth house will influence the mind quite a bit. Mars in the fifth house will lead to fiery temperament, uh, anger, and rushing into conflicts. Malefics in the fifth house kind of really kind of ruin the fifth house because they impact, they impact happiness. Um, um, we have this complicated um, thing about Argola, which I've written an article about. I, I decided not to teach it in this class because you probably need like four hours to study it. But um, um, malefics in the in the fifth house destroy a lot of the argola, so they destroy the fourth house happiness. They destroy the seventh house marriage. They destroy the second house family life, and they can negatively impact career. So malefics in the fifth house have a very kind of negative impact on kind of the basic cornerstones of our life. You know, our fourth house, seventh house, tenth house, and even the second second house, our family life. So um, Watch those malefics in the fifth house. Um, Saturn in the fifth house may create stubbornness, um, emotional detachment, and the ability to move through issues connected to those houses. So, um, you know, Saturn is is the big um, depression. I mean, Saturn is the opposite of Jupiter. Jupiter is all about enthusiasm for life and moving forward. We need that enthusiasm and passion to 
to get through our lives. And Saturn in the fifth house is really, particularly if it's afflicted, low dignity, you know, really can kind of squash a person's life. It can squash, it makes them more stubborn, emotionally detached, and it ruins the core issues of life. So Saturn in the fifth house is a pretty challenging um, placement. Uh, Rahu in the fifth house will create cunning and selfish person who will manipulate others and have a confused mind. Again, the key word for Rahu is often confusion when it's afflicted. Now, Rahu can be brilliant and very spiritual, too. Um, but when, most of the time, you're going to find Rahu is afflicted. It's going to be in a bad sign. It's going to have a malefic aspect. It's, it's going to have some negative taint to it. Um, and then and then it tends to be manipulative, cunning, selfish, and, and you know, just confuses the mind. And people don't have good judgment. K2 in the fifth house will create a demanding, cruel, and rash and impulsive person. And, you know, K2, one of the key words, you know, K2 is like more, so it, it tends to repress anger, and then suddenly it will just explode out of nowhere. Um, I have K2 in the eighth. I really, control, my anger really doesn't happen very often. It's actually a problem, but when, when it gets released, you know, it just, it does explode, and, you know, you don't want to be around it. Um, and K2 can have that quality um, in the fifth house. Um, again, dignity can can uh, offset that. So K2 does well in Pisces and Sagittarius and Leo. Rahu does well in Gemini, Taurus, and Virgo. So, so again, if their fifth house is connected in that way, you know, some of the energy um, of the malefics is negated. Um, so we said the fourth house is the conscious mind. The fifth house is the intellect which filters the images of the mind. It, if afflicted, it lacks discrimination. So to me, this is really the most important thing about the fifth house is, is the per, does the person have good judgment? You know, is he a good counselor? Does he make good decisions? Can he take his life experience and um, um, learn from it and not make future bad decisions? And so if you get like a debilitated Jupiter connected to the fifth house, then the person, you know, has to work three times as hard to learn from their past experience. Um, so the fifth house is kind of like our IQ. It allows us to take our experience and, and to learn from the, from, from the past and not make the same mistakes. But if your fifth house is weak, then you don't learn from your mistakes and you keep making the same mistakes. So people who are suffering usually keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And consequently, their fifth house ruler is probably, or their fifth house is weak, and they can't learn from past experience. So uplifting the fifth house is really important. And usually mantras and meditation are the best remedy for the fifth house because the fifth house is connected to mantras, right? So the best remedy for the fifth house is getting them into a mantra meditation or japa. Um, so we can see what... Planets are dominating the mind in the fifth house. And to me, that's why it's so kind of fascinating, because if you want to see, for, for Vedic psychology, if you want to see how the person's mind work, you've got to look at the fourth and the fifth house and the moon and, and Mercury. And the fifth house tells you so much about the person's mind. Um, so if the, um, if, um, if the fifth, Lord of the fifth goes into the eighth house, it will imbue the, the mind with eighth house qualities that will make it uh, as those are scorpion qualities. It can make it mystical, occult, very subconscious, very psychological. I, I have Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth, and that's why my classes and my interest in spirituality and astrology and psychology are so strong because 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 my mind is just always thinking um, eighth house. Put Lord of the Fourth going into the twelfth house. The mind gets gets in, in imbued with Pisces qualities, the natural 12th sign of the zodiac. So it gets connected to interest in moksha and spirituality and philosophy and spiritual missions and seva. So um, you can see a lot of tell a lot about what the person is passionate about um, and what their where their mind goes based on what house of the fifth lord is placed in um lord of the fifth and the sixth um is a difficult placement it's probably one of the most difficult placements because the sixth house as we'll learn next week is about bad habits you know if we're not disciplined about our diet 
and our medicine and our exercise, then we develop health problems. Um, and the, if we're disciplined about doing service for others and going to work reg regularly and taking care of our health, then the sixth house flourishes. Lord of the fifth and the sixth is, is, is difficult. It creates people who are more fearful and an inability to fight for themselves. They have um, weak senses and they're subject to distress from work. So um, I, think, I think Lord of the fifth and the sixth is one of the more difficult placements because they're more prone to stress from work um, they don't stand up for themselves, and then they get into addictive patterns, and they, you know, they don't keep up with their exercise and their diet, and then they go downhill and develop health problems. Uh, Lord of the fifth and the eighth may the dark side of it um, is you may develop lack of confidence, um, and you're afraid of making mistakes, and so you don't act. You may have problems with guilt. Again, the eighth house is so often connected to the past, um, and and where the fifth and the eighth may lead to kind of blaming others if it's afflicted. Um, again, talking about the nature of the mind in the fifth house, um, if the fifth house has a lot of dignity, it will give the person a lot of distinction. Um, it may create arrogance and make them superior to others because, because the karka for the, for the sun, uh, for the fifth house is, is Leo, the sun. And, I have, um, my 10th house is in the fifth, um, and it's Leo, and I have, um, um, you know, people, I have, the, I have my son in the fifth house. And so I have a very strong connection to confidence at work and things like that. And some people, you know, don't like that, and they try to pull me down. But it is, it's a good quality because it gives me authority and confidence in everything that I do, and, and it's a very powerful placement. Um, Intelligence is, is a very key word for the fifth house. Um, um, it's about the power of judgment and discrimination. Um, does the person learn quickly or slowly? Um, um, the ninth house is the guru and the fifth house is the student. Will we learn quickly through our intelligence? Will, so the fifth house tells you a lot about whether somebody's going to be a good student. Are they going to pick up stuff and remember it? You know, are they intelligent enough to to discriminate? We, again, we need to go through a lot of examples, um, and try and want to get through some of these basic core issues, and then we'll, we'll work on your charts a little bit. Um, the fifth house is also about the future. You, you judge um, whether you are a, a good planner from the fifth house. Now, to me, this is really kind of huge. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that get into messes because they can't assimilate past lessons and apply them to the future. You know, if you, you know, again, the problem is, do you keep making um, the same mistakes over and over again because you don't remember what you did wrong? And if you see an afflicted fifth house, then the person just doesn't learn from the past. Um, if I have a really strong fifth house, it's my strongest house, and, and you know, I'm an incredible planner, um, um, I learn from, from the past very easily, and, and I try not to repeat my past mistakes. Um, and I think it's, it's really kind of um, uh, very important. Again, can you, you know, usually, you, you know, the remedy is usually you have to get people into meditation. They, they need to kind of develop their mind and their intelligence and discrimination to kind of heal that pattern of its problem. Um, Fifth house is your IQ. Um, the first house is the intelligence you were born with, and the fifth house is the intelligence you gain from life experience. So again, are you able to integrate what you learn and not make the same mistakes? The debilitated planets in the fifth house may require three times as much time to learn lessons and alter future experiences. And so that's it's a real problem. Exalted planets in the, in the fifth have superior learning and intelligence and understanding. Um, So just looking at the planets in the fifth house and connecting them to intelligence and the ability to discriminate and to judge, here's what we can say. So um, again, if there's dignity for the planet, Sun, Jupiter, Rahu, and Ketu will support deep intelligence and judgment in planning an organization. And so here's a case where if Rahu is in Gemini or Taurus or Virgo, 
um, it's, it actually, you know, is, is a blessing. Um, K2 also will be strong in Pisces and, and Scorpio and Sagittarius and Leo. So um, person actually, that if, if it's connected to the fourth house, may, may create deep superior intelligence. Jupiter, Sun, obviously very strong. Um, and again, we talked about Jupiter's Karka Baba Nacho, but, but, you know, if it has some dignity, it may not create kind of the arrogance and the nodal energy that, that might go with that. Um, K2 brings intuition, intuition, but some cruelty. Sun brings excellent timing and organizational skills. Jupiter brings wisdom um, to find answers. Saturn is a problem. Again, I think Saturn is the worst planet to have in the fifth house because it makes one a slow learner and leads to a lot of wrong decisions and mistakes. Um, Mars will create haste in decisions, uh, anger in, in decisions. Moon can uh, obscure proper thinking and be too emotional, um, particularly if it's afflicted. Mercury is intelligent, but it's immature. Um, we said, remember um, yesterday's class, we talked about, you know, Mercury is often thought about as the prince. You know, the sun is the king, Mercury is the prince, and the prince is just but still learning, you know, so he doesn't, he makes immature decisions. So Mercury in the fifth, you would think, okay, Mercury is intelligent, it's going to do well in the fifth house, but it may be immature decision-making abilities, you know, um, not, not the best, particularly if it's in Pisces or afflicted in the Aries or something like that. Um, Venus is great in the fifth house. You want, uh, you know, uh, Venus is a guru planet like Jupiter, and it's great with decisions. It, you know, it, it, so you want Jupiter and, you want Sun um, and Venus in the fifth house more than you want Mars and Saturn. Um, fifth house is connected to power and status through Leo. So um, the fifth house can give you tremendous power. I mean, one of the things that I'm starting to understand is I have Lord of the fifth and the eighth. I have Sun in the fifth. Um, and um, we can look at my chart in a second if you want. But um, you know, I have this mastery and, and confidence in teaching astrology and spiritual teaching because of, of Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth, and it's the Sun, and it's confident, and it's connected to a stationary Jupiter, so it has this incredible power to it. And you know, this is something that just kind of became natural to me from past lives, um, because the Fifth House is connected to past life merit. But you know, I've taken it for granted. But you know, that you can see it in the chart; it was kind of an inherited thing. Um, good. Um, the fifth house is also natural learning abilities. So like the sun in Leo, it indicates what we know naturally. Um, um, if we put the fifth Lord in the third, um, um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I need to get some water. So wherever the fifth Lord goes, we naturally have knowledge about that, and it becomes very easy. And and we'll look at your charts for this too when we when we when we look at that. So I've got Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth, so I naturally have knowledge about um, occult sciences and, and astrology um, and spiritual practice because um, it's just something I kind of inherited. The fifth Lord brings that grace with it. Um, um, so. Wherever the fifth Lord goes, there's kind of natural, it brings good luck uh, from past life merit to give you natural knowledge about that area. So it's a kind of a powerful thing to see in some of these charts. Um, and then the fifth house is about love and passion. Um, and, and wherever the fifth house Lord goes, that's what we love and consider most important. Lord of the fifth and that goes to the third house, love of siblings, love of writing, or the fifth into Pisces, lead of, of a philosophy and spiritual knowledge, or the fifth and the fourth, love of mother, love, love of comfort of home. So whatever, wherever the fifth house Lord goes, it tends to create incredible love and deep knowledge of it. And I think it's really kind of powerful to see somebody is blocked with their fifth house. Um, if you can unblock it, then suddenly they'll be happier. Um, um, you know, the, the houses that the fifth floor goes in will, will make them happy, so um, will enliven them. So I've got my fifth floor is in Gemini. And um, so 
you know, I have this incredible thing about writing and teaching because um, the fifth house just brings all this grace to Gemini, which is all about communication, writing, and teaching. So where the fifth house lore goes, whatever sign it goes into, that sign's qualities gets enlivened. In this case, it's, it's um, communications uh, for me. Um, and, and you'll love the houses aspect by the fifth house lord. So, so the fifth house aspects are very powerful because those are things that you will also love. And we'll look at that. We'll practice this in your chart in a second. Um, I'm just about done with this section. Uh, Moon and Venus are the planets of love and attachment. Um, Venus owning the fifth going to the third will show deep emotional attachment to siblings. Moon governs the fifth goes to the seventh, deep emotional attachment to spouse. So um, fifth house, again, wherever it goes, brings love and a passion of passion. So fifth house, is, that's why fifth house is such a great house because it just brings love of knowledge. It brings past life, love and passion to wherever it goes. Um, a lot of yoga is connected to the fifth house about for finance. Connecting the fifth to the eleventh house, the fifth to the ninth house. We have a whole tape on this in our investment class. Um, children, we just said um, we we can't spend time on. If you want to um, study all the rules for predicting children, which you should know, you can read Sanjay Ra's book, The Crux of Vedic Astrology. He has a chapter on children. Um, you could read B. V. Raman's book, How to Judge a Coruscant, Volume One. And um, there are many, many, many books deal about children. And that's because they, everybody talks about children in India in the Vedic astrology books. They don't talk about this other stuff. I wanted to give you something new. So we spent time on the other stuff. Um, okay, let's practice on your charts. Um, and I got through most of the basic points that I wanted to get through. Do you have any questions? It's, again, I'm sorry I have to lecture so much, but it's such a fascinating material. We'll, we'll practice on famous people. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you know, when you have the nodes in the fifth house, particularly, and if they are in uh, um, Cancer or Leo, uh, is that more disruptive, especially if it's in Cancer, you know, for a Pisces ascendant, because the fifth house also represents the moon, which is the mind and consciousness. And if you have, like, Rahu or Ketu over there, does that generally cause a lot of confusion? Yes, uh, that you, you got it right. So yeah, you you, you know Leo is is different. Um, cancer, you know, is connected to the moon, and whenever you have Rahu K two connections to the moon, you get mental confusion. There is no dignity with Rahu and Cancer. Um, you know, K two does um, well in in Leo. It's actually almost a Mula Katrina placement in Mars and 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 um, K two are good buddies and Mars and the sun are good buddies. So K2 sun um, connections, K2 Leo connections are, are, are actually powerful for deep discrimination. Um, Rahu in Leo um, gets too ambitious. Um, um, you know, it, 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 you know, it wants status, um, it wants fame and it, it can, it can really be a downfall. I don't, I think it can get, it can lack discrimination in Leo. Uh, because it, it gets so power hungry, and that's where you get all these politicians with Rahu and Leo that that just are you know um, you know crazed about power, but they, they they make all these horrible decisions. You know, <laughs> good question. You kind of become like an egomaniac. I can imagine if Rahu is in Leo, but in uh, in Cancer, that means the person because that's just from a psychological angle. Angle, does that would that cause a lot of emotional confusion, inability to think rationally, that kind of stuff? Yes, yes. I mean, you know, anytime you get Rahu, I mean, you have to look at all the other houses involved. But um, you know, you know, we we in Jyotish we have to make these blanket judgments because we have to teach basic principles. But then we have to look at all the exceptions. You know, you know, Rahu exalted in the Navamsha chart, and in you know, in the eleventh house in the Navamsha chart, my negate. Some of the problem if, of Rahu and Cancer, you know, you you just you always have to look at it more microscopically. You know, we have to start with the Rashi and the basic principles, but then we have to go deeper. Thanks. Good Thanks. question. Other questions? Okay, let's look at your charts. So we have I have one uh, comment here. So one, one tip I had learned a long time back was that 
if you have a Buddha Aditi Yoga connected to the fifth house, especially with a strong Mercury, that really signifies a lot of keen intelligence. And if I remember correctly, Hillary Clinton's chart has that. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, 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 unaffected Buddha Aditi Yoga and the fifth is, is enhances the intelligence. That's what I remember. Right, right. Very good point. Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't. Um, we haven't spent a lot of time on yogas because it's really kind of a difficult subject. Um, and I, I've mentioned to you, I have a problem with yogas because sometimes they manifest only in specific periods. There's some yogas that manifest the whole lifetime. And those are the ones that are really worth learning because they do alter the whole chart. And the one that you mentioned is, you know, is one that probably is, is not as localized. And, and the yogas, yeah, I mean, that's an example where, you know, Again, you always have to look at dignity. We have these general rules. I mentioned that Mercury can be immature in the fifth house, um, but you know, if it's exalted and there's some powerful yoga with it or something like that, then we bring supreme intelligence exactly. Yeah. Good, good comment. And unfortunately, Jotus is a lifelong experience. Okay, let's look at your charts. Um, we might. Uh, ooh. Hope we can find the right page here. Okay. Uh, it didn't save it. Oh, God. Since I switched computers, I lost all my formats. Um, Okay. Um, okay. I just wanted to make sure I got the planetary position up. Um, I don't care about the Navamsha chart. Um, okay. So let's look at your chart. Um, okay. Um, let's start with Kathy. Um, Okay. And anybody, uh, again, I, I need you to all to start kind of practicing too, because um, I don't want to always be talking. So um, I, um, one of my teachers used the Socratic method where he would ask questions. Well, what would you say about Kathy's fifth house? Um, and, and, and the planets connected to her fifth house. Um, how, what does it say about her judgment? What are her passions and, and the things that she loves most about life. So we're going to apply all the principles that we just learned to Kathy's chart. So um, I'm going to um, open up the floor if anybody wants to just jump in and, and, and say anything because you know, then I don't have to talk all the time. And I want you to start thinking on your own because we, you know, and we, we all need to kind of be able to practice this stuff. It takes time, but um, so what would you say about Kathy's fifth house and her fifth house lord? Fifth house lord is Jupiter. Jupiter's in the second. In Virgo, it's retrograde. Um, in the Navamsha chart, um, Jupiter is with Saturn and it's in Capricorn. Um, and um, Moon in, in Sagittarius is... Um, Strong by dignity, moon in the Navamsha charts in the sixth house. Okay, a lot of, lot of information going on here. And um, so what will we say about what, you know, what Kathy's passions are, what um, her relationship to her children are, um, anything you want to throw out about the fifth house? I'm sorry I can't pull up. Uh, I should. Um, I, I guess you've all gotten used to my northern style. I've given up on trying to get the southern style up quickly. <laughs> um. I'm actually trying to learn you to be amb ambidextrous because you need to know both north and south. So. so let me take a shot at it. You know, again, just looking at the chart, two minutes, right? That's how we learn. So uh, we have moon. Uh, so as far as the aspects to the fifth house goes, of course, we have the moon, we have the Mars uh, with the eighth house aspect, um, uh, aspecting the moon. 
uh, which Mars and Moon generally, uh, of course, Mars has a malefic aspect, but Mars or, or Moon sometimes works okay. Uh, the Lord of the Fifth, uh, which is the which is Jupiter aspect. So there's a perivartan going on between the uh, the Jupiter and Mercury there, but Jupiter doesn't have any malefic aspects of uh, in, any other planets. So overall, uh, a fairly strong fifth lord and the fifth house uh, with, as I said, only the malefic aspect of Mars, which uh, if you're talking prediction, moon in the fifth house generally is good for fertility. Uh, overall, I think as I talked about good strength of mind, but Mars aspect in the mind makes it sharp, but also makes it a little uh, explosive. Uh, and uh, I would say, keen intelligence with, uh, with the placement of Jupiter and a fairly stable uh, mind. And Moon and the Mars comet sometimes gives good intuitive ability too. So that's 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Of. That, that was great for you, Klaus. I'm really glad, glad that you could, could speak up. Um, that's very good. And then we'll cheat a little bit. I mean, she's got Moon in the fifth house and um, we know that she has a daughter. <laughs> I, I happen to know that, so I'm cheating. But yeah, I, I don't know anything about her, so. I have... Yeah, but but we could, you know, usually if you put a female planet in the fifth house, you may, you know, yeah, of course it's a sign too, but um, but but the the moon in the fifth house here may create create a daughter. So, um, relationship with her children, which we didn't talk about, would be good, right? Jupiter is in. Yeah. I don't see it personally looking at the chart unless I mean I'm just looking at the D1. I don't see anything standing out which would say uh, issue with the relation I mean problems with relationship with children. I don't see that. Uh, okay. Great. Okay. Um, Mars Saturn, the, the whole uh, fourth tenth lord, uh, some stress at home, that's a different issue, but, but children specifically not. Right, right. Okay. Right. Very good. Okay, Kathy, do you want to add anything to what Vika said from your experience? Well, just something literal, which I find kind of interesting when there's something in Jodish that is pretty literal, and that is my daughter was born on a Monday, which is the moon's day. Oh, interesting. Well. Okay. There are all these kind of advanced rules about that kind of stuff. I, I actually was doing some research on it today, and I, I don't even memorize them all because I don't do children that much. But um, that's, yeah, it's quite quite fascinating. Um, anything, Kathy? What would you say about your the nature of your mind? Is is the moon a little? Is the Mars aspect agitating the mind a little bit? There is there is there a kind of frustration and anger that comes up a little bit, or is it? Supporting intuition more. Uh, perhaps I think maybe I feel more of the um, Lord of the House Jupiter effect on my mind. You know, that's right. Where like, most of my thinking goes. Right. Um, there's probably some aspect of the, that Mars. Uh, I have to think about that. <laughs> okay, and then. Um, I can also teach, Kathy is a meditation teacher, so you know her fifth house. Um, um, there is a connection between her tenth house from the aspect of Mars, which is a you know which is a a good planet for because it owns the ninth house um, to to her moon. So I mean there 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 is kind of an interest in, in mantras. Um, ninth house Lord aspecting the fifth house is very powerful. So um, we'll pick up on that. Um, okay, great. Thank you for being first. Um, let's go to Charlene. Um, okay, anybody can jump in and practice, but um, Charlene's fifth house lord is Scorpio. Um, again, he has a due rulership with Mars and Ketu. Um, uh, Mars may be more important, certainly aspecting um, the the um, um, the fifth uh, the the fifth house. So that's, that's very powerful. Um, um, Lord of the fifth Mars is in the eleventh. Um, um, 
And in the Mamsha chart, Allure of the Fifth Mars is in the seventh um, in Leo. And uh, Mars is in an, in, in an enemy's house, uh, obviously in Taurus. Uh, an enemy, again, really is not the right word to use. It just means that Mars and Taurus may be a little bit out of its dharma. Um, um, anybody want to say anything about um, Charlene's um, uh, a, a, a discrimination, judgment, learning ability, passions, children, any of those things? We, you know, I, I'll throw in stuff too, but um, anybody want to take a, take a guess at it? In practice, I promise not to make you wrong. So you have the Saturn and the Mars aspect on the fifth, uh, which would indicate, I would say, some stress uh, with fifth house matters. Um, um, of course, Mars being the stronger here, but obviously uh, maybe. Uh, ability to move ahead, but maybe sometimes getting into an analysis paralysis uh, kind of uh, situation. Um, so where, where are you seeing the, the Saturn aspect onto Mars? Because it's a... On the fifth house. So basically on the fifth house, you, you have the aspect of Saturn right. and on, you have the aspect of Mars. So basically the fifth house is aspected by both Mars and Saturn. Right. That's That's what I'm talking about. Right. Um, so again, um, with the northern style, Jupiter is, um, Scorpio is the fifth house. Is that, is, is that right? The Scorpio is the fifth house. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Um, Saturn's aspect in the ninth. Um, no. The Saturn's aspect in Scorpio. Okay. Um, I'm confused. Now. You're confused a little bit. So that's why I was just trying to. Um, I, I, you probably because Saturn has a third and the eighth house, third and the tenth house aspect. So why would it be? It's a Saturn is sitting in Virgo, right? Saturn's in Virgo. It's aspecting Sag. The tenth house aspect is aspecting Sag. It's okay, because I. I oh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, um, Vikas is correct. It's actually aspecting my fifth house, Saturn, because it's in, in Virgo in my third house. Yeah. And so Saturn has that three, seven, ten right. uh, aspect. Because yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know what I'm thinking here. I, I'm, I'm like, I, think my, I think three classes this weekend has been too much for me. <laughs> okay, I, I apologize, Vikas. You're absolutely right. Yes, yeah, Saturn is aspecting your fifth house, and I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, w I was not seeing it. Um, okay, so why don't you repeat what you just said? I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for, for sharing that. So hey, I'm just curious. Um, as far as the state of it, do you feel sometimes the whole Saturn and Mars, uh, so basically sometimes wanting to move ahead and then other times just analyzing it too much? I'm just curious. Um, because I, I chuckled when you said that because you're, you're correct um, as far as with the analysis paralysis. Um, tend to overthinking things and um, not really necessarily moving ahead with all those thoughts and stuff like that. Um, you're correct in that regard, yes. <laughs> right. Um, the the good the good news is that you know that Charlene's Saturn is t is very uplifted by her Jupiter because Jupiter is almost conjunct Saturn. So, in in a sense, it may be kind of slow thinking, um, you know, um, at times. But but it can be very deep because you know Saturn is is being um, being uplifted by Jupiter quite a bit. So ultimately, you will make good decisions. But but you may be slow to come to them, and they may be more ponderous because of indecision. I I would think you would anyway. That that's just my quick take on it. Does that makes sense. Um, that 
Yeah, that too as well. Absolutely. Um, that also as well. Um, as far as that, um, I, I do tend to think I'm very, um, I don't know, yeah, introspective as well. So, yeah, all of those things. Now, how about your relationship with your children? Um, you have you have one son, right? Yes, I have one son. Okay, and then Mars is is a is a good planet for Scorpio. Um, and I mean for for Cancer rising, and Mars is aspecting its own sign. Again, a male planet Mars aspecting its own sign. Um, so is your, your is your son very athletic? Um, um, so the interesting thing is he has a lot of fire in him. Um, he's not athletic per se, but he's an Aries, um, sun in Aries, Leo ascendant. Um, but he definitely is a fiery kid in that regard. Um, yeah, so and, that's only. Mm -hmm. and, and do, 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 you, do you get frustrated with this behavior because of the Saturn aspect or is, is it, um, is the Mars aspect just kind of, you know, you know, helping out a lot? Um, I do get frustrated. Um, not like, not even necessarily. I do get frustrated with my son um, um, sometimes. Um, but then I also get sometimes I think get frustrated with people in general, like especially in my workplace. Um, but um, I try to control um, my temperament uh, many of times. But yeah. My temper, so yeah. Okay, okay. I have a question for you, Barry. Here, so when you see in, in this case, let's say Sean, so obviously she's very young, so, so we, we don't can't predict that right now, or we won't know. But when you see the Lord of the Fifth, let's say going to the eleventh, that is seven away from itself, would that be indicator that eventually the sun would move far away from uh, where he was born and sort of stay away from the mother? Uh, would that Good question. You know, I've never, I've never heard, I've never um, read or studied that. Um, and again, I, you know, I have to admit, you know, it's interesting. We're spending a little time on children, just, just because sometimes they're easy. But, um, but you know, there are a lot of complex rules about them, and I, and I have not studied it enough to kind of pull the answer off the top of my head. So, a, a, a big, I don't know. Um, um, Interesting observation, though. Um, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Charlene, anything you want to add about passion and enthusiasm in your life connected to your fifth house? Is it? Um, yeah, I would definitely say that um, overall I do consider myself a very passionate. Um, a lot of times I think I suffer from despondency, and I think more so because of where my sun and moon is and then Saturn afflicting that. But then I always get a burst of um, optimism or energy to move forward. And I think my Mars, personally speaking, has basically been helping me get through as far as life and moving ahead. Um, so I, I, I honestly like my Mars. I think it has helped me a lot. So you know, Your Mars is, is really important. It's a, you know, it's really a, a very key part of your chart. It is the fifth Lord. and, and do you love things connected to Taurus, which would be good food and luxury and, you know, certainly money and things like that? Um, Mars would create a, the fifth house Lord in Taurus would create a love of things connected in, in Taurus. I was just wondering if that's a, true. That is very true. I thought that was more so because of my Venus Rahu, but yes, I do. I, I do like um, the finer things in life and food and luxury and comfort and all those things. Very all, all those Taurus Venetian stuff I like. Okay, and so the, and, and that is, and I just wanted to illustrate this principle that wherever the fifth floor goes, it creates immediate love for things connected by sign, and also to the eleventh house. In this case, would be, um, um, you know, when you do have friends, you know, there's there's a deep love and connection with them. Maybe there's a, a competitive energy with friends because Mars is kind of fed it, competitive. Maybe there's um, um, groups is also the 11th house. Any Anything we, we would know from there? Um, I would say as far as with friends, yes. Um, sometimes there could be a competitive energy, not because I want it to, but for some reason it seems to exist. Um, I also tend, I don't know if it has anything to relate to that, but I always tend to have more male friends than female friends. 
Um, and then another thing too is um, just being able to manifest the things that I want, like whatever, like if I decide I want to go for something, I'm able to make it happen. So that's another thing I wanted to bring up as well. And I think I think Mars is supporting your spiritual meditation energy too, because Mars is aspecting the own sign. Scorpio is a very mystical sign too, so I think Mars aspecting its own sign does support meditation for you. Although you may be a little bit restless because Mars can be a little bit too antsy. You know, there may be, you know, um, kind of interesting. Are you are you athletic at all, Charlene? Yes, I am athletic. And I'm athletic built as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm an athletic person and, and competitive in that regard, so, like sports and stuff. Right. So the Mars aspect on Scorpio is going to show that. Now, I just I wanted to practice with – I didn't mean to go so deep with Charlene, but – I wanted to practice, and I'm neglecting everybody else. But I just wanted to practice some of these things. Let's, I, I think we're going to have time to look at one more chart, and then we'll come back to your other charts um, um, in a minute. Um, um, Vic, we could spend a whole hour on everybody's charts. <laughs> okay, let's look at um, Nicole. Um, I, sometimes I forget Nicole. Um, okay, Nicole's fifth house is very powerful. My God, Mars in Aries in its own sign. It's in Ashwini, Nakshatra, the beginning of the sign. And actually, Mars likes being at the beginning of the sign because it's like a gets a head start on the competition. Mars likes, you know, gets a head start out of the gate in the early sign, especially particularly at the beginning of Aries, even though it is. Gandanta area, the Mars Gandanta is not Svergodama. It's a very powerful Mars um, here. In the Navamcha chart, it goes into your 12th house. So that's where the fifth house energy can get a little stuck. Um, we'll have to talk about that. If that, that could be subconscious anger, repressed anger um, that, that, you know, that you don't let out in relationship. And, and even if it's, you know, business relationship or friends relationship, you know, if that anger doesn't come out, I think it kind of blocks your passion. Uh, but but normally, the, you know, we think this Mars in Aries in the fifth is very powerful. Um, it could be that the mind is too angry and hasty at times. Um, we we don't have we have a Mercury aspect on it, um, which is pretty broad. So Mercury and Libra asking, aspecting Mars, and, and Mercury has dignity in Libra, and Mercury and Mars oppositions usually create kind of fighting amongst friends, but um, between the 5th and the 11th, but again, it's a wide aspect, I don't think it's really terrible, but if the energy is blocked and, and, and not allowed to express itself in the 12th house and the Navamsha chart, then there's a problem. Um, Nicole, you want to say anything? Yes, um, yes, I think the uh, Mars in Divan in Rashi chart and does express uh, my life energy quite well and uh, in terms of, uh, you know, being quite an impulsive uh, decision maker. Uh, I tend to, you know, now I learn to meditate on big decisions, but in the past I'm quite an impulsive uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, a thinker. And also, um, it also gives me this athletic kind of look, you know, I, I don't do any sports, I'm not into sports, but I look like a sport, sporty type. A person, uh, in terms of the, in the Navamsha chart, the Mars move into 12th house and being a little bit uh, suppressed there, and I think that also um, uh, uh, speaks volume truth as well. I think later in life, I feel I, I I learn how to kind of modulate my anger, maybe or discontent, you know, uh, in my business dealing and personal relationship, and and as um, you know, I think as a process, you know the spirit getting the maturity and, and in the process, I, I need to learn where to strike a balance. And I think that's a lesson. And here it presents itself um, when Mars is placed in the 12th house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great Nicole. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, I still have a bunch more material to cover, so I'm going to have to practice on the rest of your charts um, at the end of the class, and I'll practice the new principles that we learn next. Um, so I'm sorry that, okay. Um, I, I've added these. Um, I'm, I'm trying to kind of systematize what I'm doing in this in this houses class. So I have a section on Bhavat Bhavam on signs owning the fifth house and planets in the fifth house, and some of it is cookbook. So we can kind of maybe just go through like the key points kind of quickly. Um, so um, 
last couple of weeks we've kind of focused on you you always want to look at the sign owning the house because it will tell you something about its nature and i, and I shared with you last week that you know in, in my early judges career people said don't pay attention to signs because houses are more important but the signs you know give you the microscopic detail that you want to give a person a lot of analysis so definitely do not relate the signs, which is why I give you another cookbook of signs to kind of keep practicing. And the other thing with the signs owning the houses is what other house does the sign is owned by the planet because, you know, it's kind of like if you pull one leg of a chair, the other legs come with it. You know, if the planet owns the fifth and the eighth house, naturally, um, when you go into a cycle connected to, to that, you're bringing in both legs of the chair. And so you always have to remember the other house that's connected to to the to the house involved. So um, you guys, that's pretty basic stuff, but just reminding you about it because um, it's just good to remember to practice it in your thinking. So um, just kind of summarize: um, signs owning the the fifth house may tell us something about the quality of your intelligence, the quality of your creativity, and the sex of your children. So those are things that you can look at for the signs of the house. Fire signs will create a strong moral nature and, and, and will not be emotional. Again, the fire signs like Sagittarius in particular, owning the fifth house, you know, are very ethical and connected to Dharma. The fire signs by, by nature are very Dharmic. So they're very interested in doing what's right. The earth signs um, are, are, you know, they hold on better. So they will give you good memory. Uh, they will be more imagination um, in the earth signs, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, it does when I think about it. Um, and there's a deep desire for hidden things. The air signs will give a deep philosophical nature and ability to work through life's problems. Because they're, you know, the air signs are thinkers. They, they like to, to think through their problems. And so when the fifth house is connected to the air signs, it makes people more philosophical. The water signs are going to be... Uh, more impartial and tolerant and, and be more persistent um, and obviously more emotional by nature. Um, so here's the cookbook. I'm going to go through the highlights because I mean, I, I, it's a cookbook for that reason. It's for you to have. You can print it out. You can refer to it. But um, the idea is to learn the general principles. Um, so Aries um, owning the fifth house is ruled by Mars for Sagittarius rising and Scorpio will own the twelfth house. Now, this one's a little bit more of a problematic one because because um, Aries, you know, brings in in the twelfth house and and, and the twelfth house um, um, and then the Sagittarius. Uh, Mars is not a purely wonderful planet for Sag rising. Like for Pisces, Mars owns the second and the ninth, and it's really the best planet. Uh, for Sagittarius, Mars, Mars owns the twelfth house, so it brings a lot of twelfth house baggage with it. Um, um, it created a restless inter intellect in that sense. Um, um, the, the core issue with Aries is, is that it's connected to divine creativity, maybe very amb ambitious, maybe toned down by realism. Sag rising energy gives a strong ethical basis and interest in military play and sacrifice for country. Senses toward being liberal. Um, for women, it may not support childbearing because it owns the fifth and the twelfth house. So. Again, um, you know, you have to look at many other things, but just by the co-ownership of the fifth and the twelfth house, there's, you know, there's certainly more of a, a potential problem here if the fifth house were afflicted by Rahu or Ketu or some other malefic influence, Saturn, um, you know, particularly, you know, certainly would would cause problems with children. Um, Taurus has, has, is good for bearing children in general. Um, uh, when Taurus owns the fifth house, we're looking at, um, um, actually, this is wrong. Uh, it's for Capricorn rising. So Taurus owns the fifth house for Capricorn rising, with Libra owning the other house, being the, um, uh, the tenth. Um, Deep joy for spiritual practice, actually. Um, um, interest in the fine arts and interior design. So just think about, I, I don't know if it makes sense for me to go through these so quickly because we just, we're going to get lost. But basically, look at the cookbook. The thing, the thing that you have to do is you have to kind of 
train your mind to remember what does the sign mean? What does the other planet owning the other house mean? Because you can't, you have to pull stuff out of your head more easily, more often times than you can look it up in a book or in your cookbook. So you have to kind of think, what are the principles here? Is it an air, is the fifth house an air sign? Is the person going to think a lot and be more philosophical? Um, is, the, is the fifth house an air, a fire sign? Are they going to be more impulsive? You know, so you, you have to kind of um, remember the kind of the general rules because um, I, I gave you a lot of information in the cookbook um, and you can sit, you can read through it, you can print it out and use it, but I don't know if it makes a lot of sense for us to, to go through it, but I just want you to remember the principles. Um, let's look at um, house placements, pretty, pretty basic. Um, um, I mean, the fifth lord will do well in the in the in the cardinal horses in the kinder houses um, in general. So, you know, you want the fifth lord in the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth. Um, you, you you get all kinds of wonderful yogas when you have the lord of the fifth and the fifth, or the lord of the fifth and the ninth. You usually get some of the best charts, the most famous people if there's a lot of dignity. So very powerful. You, you, you know, lord of the fifth and the dustanas will create you know problems. Sixth house. Problems with children, um, block creativity, uh, health problems um, may indicate adoption of children, obstacles in worship, issuing your perfect deal. To me, I think the, the most challenging one is Lord of the Fifth and the Twelfth and the Sixth. Um, and and, and uh, again, you've got to get them into meditation. Um, Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth, loss of children or separation. I have Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth. I don't have any children. Um, um, and I did want children, but it was something I chose not to have, I guess. Um, 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 you may not feel connected to your personal deity. Again, the fifth house is connected to your Ishtadevata. And um, that's not my case because I have a stationary Jupiter in the eighth. So my Ishtadevata is Shiva um, with the sun being in the fifth house. My Jupiter is the other Ishtadevata for Shiva, um, and 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 I have, there's a connection between my son and Jupiter, with Jupiter being in the um, a son being in Jupiter's house, um, and so I have a very strong connection to 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 to, to Shiva, and that's something that um, again, if you use these cookbook rules, you get into trouble. Lord of the fifth and the twelfth losses through gambling again, fifth house is investment, separation, and loss from children. Um, could be frustration with children, children moving to a foreign country. I have a client whose child was abducted, his Lord of the Fifth and the Twelfth, and her child was abducted, uh, abducted to India, uh, even though he was American born, and she suddenly, you know, lost her child. Um, so very, very tragic sometimes. Um, the Upachaya houses, third, sixth, tenth, and eleventh. Um, um, or, you know, they're growth houses. Um, um, Lord of the Fifth and the Eleventh, good for gains and speculation, good for money. Um, um, Lord of the Fifth and the Second, you know, good, good, good connection between family and children, ability to save money, things like that. So, um, uh, basic information here. Bavak Bavam, we, these are kind of the hidden meanings uh, behind the house placements. Um, Core meaning again for the first uh, fifth house is create the creative mind, how how we manifest or create, um, whether we create children or art, whether uh, our, our 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 spiritual practices even kind of a, a joyful uh, creative experience for us. Um, third from the third is the fifth communication skills and writing. So that's why the fifth house is another um, uh, creative writing house. Um, nine from the ninth is the fifth. Again, the trine houses will show our paternal ancestry. Grandfather will give us our inherited spiritual beliefs. Twelve from the sixth of the fifth, uh, end of illness and, and uh, the ability to get out of debt. Now that's something that can come up, um, and and so you get a Jupiter aspect to to um, the fifth house, um, and or or Venus, you know, going station retrograde for three months in the fifth house or something, it may, it may give the ability to help get rid of debt, um, or there may be retirement in the wings. Um, 
six from the 12th is the fifth service organization the foreigners um, um, may be involved in our work again six houses is one of the workhouses 11 from the 7th is the 5th, friends of our spouse. 7 from the 11th is our, our, our friend's spouses. <laughs> so I, I think this Bavavavam thing is kind of fascinating because it allows us to think about things in, in non-standard ways. So that's why I've been adding it every week um, so that you think about it. 10th from the 8th is the 5th is the house, career in metaphysics or astrology. 8th from the 10th, research um, in our career. Um, money from real estate, force from the second. Again, this is all cookbook stuff. Um, um, so planets in the fifth house, again, this is all cookbook stuff. Um, um, so let's, let, let's spend the rest of our class kind of looking at, um, I, I always encourage you to kind of maybe lightly memorize the planets in the fifth house, uh, planets in the houses, because, you know, it comes up so, so much when you're doing Party Jotish, and you want to say something kind of deep. Um, um, you know, in general, remember the malefics cause more problems in the fifth house because they create a competitive mind. Uh, they create more fighting. Um, they create more problems. But um, um, we said Mercury can be a little immature. Um, Jupiter, you know, may be too strong a teacher that you may blow people away, but could be negated by dignity. Venus is one of the best placements in the fifth house for artistic expression. Saturn in the fifth house is the most challenging placement in my mind because you get stuck too 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 much on the past. Um, um, Rahu in the fifth house can be okay if it's, it has some dignity, but but it can create a lot of confusion. K2 in the fifth house, um, you know, um, if it's strong, it may create love of scriptures. Um, spiritual romantic partners, um, um, you know, strong spirituality, but it can, you know, afflict you to cause us problems. So let's look at some famous people. We've got Steven Spielberg. Um, we've got um, Henry Rousseau. Um, and we've got you, and you're famous also. You'll be famous soon. Um, any quick questions? And I put all that stuff together for you to read and to refer to, but I'm not sure it, it's a good use of our time to to go over it. We don't have enough time. Um, I, I, we could easily do two lessons on each house, and maybe if I ever teach this class again, I will make it a 24-week class, which I think it really needs to be, so we can spend more time. Um, quick questions? Okay, let's look a little bit at, at more of your charts first. Um, even people who aren't here today. So Vikas is here today, so you get to go first. Um, so uh, Vikas, um, is, as I mentioned, is, is, is an unusual chart because um, whenever you have a stellium, he's got four, five planets in Aries, it, it automatically kind of takes over the chart, particularly if there's a sun there and the sun's exalted there. So, so um, you know, this chart really should be read as Aries rising. Um, and it turns out in the United States where he lives in New Jersey, um, it's Aries rising anyway. And we've learned that principle. So I'm going to cheat and move you to New Jersey. Um, uh, I'm going to put Camden in just for fun. I know you're in Somerset, I think. Okay. Um, well, your center is actually 29 Aries. Um, so let's look at the chart um, from Aries rising, because not only because of the stellium, but because in New Jersey, he's Aries rising. Um, and, and such a strong, strong Aries rising, such a strong chart anyway. <laughs> so fifth house um, is in, is in, um, in Leo in a friend sign, um, Jupiter and Leo. So Vigas was asking whether Jupiter was too strong in the fifth house. Um, um, I think it has enough dignity in Leo 
and 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 also um, um, uh, I think we have a yoga here too between the first and the fifth. Is that right? Because um, um, uh, maybe uh, maybe not. Um, no, we do. Uh, anyway, um, again, this this chart will take a little time to digest, but um, um, so very strong fifth house, very strong discriminative ability. Um, you know, again, I'm cheating because I know Vikas and he's in the investment industry, so. Uh, Jupiter, one of the planets for banking and investment, is is in the fifth house um, in Leo in a fire sign, which is kind of a trading investment kind of warrior profession. Um, um, uh, very strong leadership ability, obviously, with Sun exalted in the first house um, um, for Aries. Um, uh, fifth Lord. Sun in the first house um, creates, you know, really kind of deep leadership intelligence and and strong ability. Now, the, 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 I'm going to ask you because um, with with so many planets in your first house being connected to the fifth lord, in this case again I'm doing the Aries chart. Um, um, is there is there a lot of mental confusion at times because you know we've got so many um, uh, we've got the moon which is a, a good planet for Aries we've got Mercury which is a which is Lord of the sixth we've got Venus which is the Lord of the seventh um, and we've got uh, uh, Mars in its own sign so um, very very strong ability to make quick quick decisions and at the same time. You know, very complicated um, uh, uh, fifth house energies. Um, you want to share anything? Sure. So uh, I think I had a lot of confusion growing up in the sense that there were a lot of thoughts I could never stop thinking, uh, and just like a stream of thoughts all the time. But I think that the more I have started meditating, it's 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 there. But but this noise, I think, has the whiteness sort of been getting more filtered out. So, um, so I think much better than before. Okay. And in, in the last class, we're going to talk about the remedies for the houses. And the remedies, the remedy for the fifth house is is mantra meditation. So it quiets the mind. So, so whenever there's a problem with the fifth house, you, you want to send them to the meditation center, um, which happened for Vikas naturally. Um, but, but um, you know, you know and I think I've emphasized it over more and more that you know, meditation will handle most of the planetary afflictions. You know, it's like the biggest advanced technique. So get them, get them into meditation. And, and I mean, I can wake up a mess in the morning with my mind all over the place and having even slept poorly. And if I do all my spiritual practice, which I'm very good at um, and very disciplined at, I'm fine, you know. Last two days, I got up at four o'clock in the morning, working on classes and just being a little bit wired. But you know, I'm I'm coherent, aren't I? <laughs> so, so spiritual practice saves the day. So, um, it's my big plug for spiritual practice. Um, anything else you want to say? Because, um, ch children again, you you don't have children. No, no, we don't have children. Right, and and was there a desire for children, and it just didn't. Um, it didn't happen. So Aparna had a miscarriage, and then it just didn't happen. Right. Okay. So um, again, even from the natal chart, Lord of the Fifth goes into um, the seventh. You conjunct Rahu exactly. So um, again, that's that's a that's a problem um, from the natal chart. From from the from from the stellium, which you know. Uh, we, we do have to look at both charts whenever you, you know, when you do these rotated charts, the, the natal chart will have the most innate karma in it. And I sh I'm cheating here. So let's go back to the natal chart. Um, so again, Virgo rising um, with just an awful lot of planets in the eighth house. Um, um, 
and again, I, you know, just with all the rules I know about Jyotish and stuff like that, I, I, I would never read this chart too much as a Virgo, but, um, um, you know, we still have to because it's your, it's your, it's your, it's, your, it's what you were born with. It's your natal chart nature, um, and very spiritual, obviously, with K two in the first um, um, chart. Lord, you know, just in a, you know, in, in a complex stellium. You're right, very busy mind that, that stuff like that. Fifth Lord Saturn in the seventh with the Rahu just really was. Again, you probably you had a lot of fear when you were growing up, but then you got through that. Is that we talked about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, Saturn and Rahu conjunct that tightly is high anxiety, and and um, um, you know, you know, it, it's really kind of quite a it, it's really a remarkable chart, and we actually we really have to go more deeply into it in the Vargas to really kind of do it justice. But um, when you look at the Rashi chart, it's quite a remarkable chart. Um, Anybody want to add anything or have any questions for Vikas? Okay, let's do Jamie's chart because she's not here. We'll look at Steven Spielberg for fun in a little bit. Um, Sonora, I have to do Sonora because she was here and she left. Um, so Sonora's fifth house is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter's in the 12th with the moon. In, in its own exalted, um, she has kind of a fascinating chart. Um, um, I, you know, what, what, what jumps out at me is that, that this chart has like incredible intuition because um, moon, moon, is, moon is, is a cancer in his own, own sign and Jupiter is exalted in the constellation of Pusha with, um, with the moon. Um, um, and this Lord of the Fifth. So I, I would I would think you know and Sonora isn't here to verify. I, I would think that Sonora is an incredibly gifted. Um, in, she's very intuitive in in her ability and, and also in her counseling ability. Um, and she is a professional counselor. Um, 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 again, you would think that Jupiter would love. Uh, fifth house being in the in the sign of cancer, she would think she would love things related to cancer, things like um, nurturing and mothering and um, things like that. I don't know if that would come across. Again, I, these are things that I, I've never asked on a run, so I'm not quite sure, but, but that's kind of fascinating. Um, fifth house, again, wherever the fifth house Lord is aspecting are things that the person loves. So Ju Jupiter and the 12 aspects uh, aspects of the fourth, um, so you know, love of love of home and things connected, vehicles and things like that. Aspecting the sixth, connect, love of healthcare, um, service and things like that, and then aspecting the eighth, love of astrology. So then it's on sign, and now that she's got an exalted Jupiter aspecting Pisces, which is the Lord of her eighth. I think that makes her a very gifted astrologer. Um, so let's do Jamie quickly. Should do Ellen too, who's not here. Let's do Ellen. Uh, Ellen's fifth lord is Mars. Uh, again, uh, Mars is in Scorpio in its own sign, aspected by a strong Jupiter in the 11th. Um, Jupiter is a you know, lord of the ninth. Um, so very powerful, uh, Lord of the Fifth and the Fifth, connected to, aspected by Jupiter, all kind of good friends, strong connections, um, very strong spiritual energy, obviously there. But, but again, Mars and the Fifth may create too much of a a, 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 a rashful, uh, impulsive mind at, 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 at times. Jupiter's cough energy may calm it a little bit, but but maybe um still that that could be an issue um um i believe ellen has children i can't i can't remember um mars and its own son you would think she would at least have a son um but again I, I, she's not here to verify it so and i can't remember um okay let's look at jamie real quickly Actually, we should look at Wu. 
Wushan, who's in Taiwan. Um, Wushan is very interesting. It looks like uh, Vika should meet Wushan. Look, you almost have the the, the same uh, same short, um, except he's a Leo, but he's got the stellium in Aries. Um, when were you born, Vika? You were born in 68. How is that interesting? Okay. So Wushan also has the Aries stellium in it. It's almost the same planets, except I think because has Venus. Um, 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 so again, we have to rotate the chart around Aries because the stellium kind of takes over the chart. And we have to read the fifth house as, as turning, being the exalted sun. So a lot of the things we said about Vikas's chart are very kind of similar here. Uh, even if we read the chart as Jupiter owning the, the, the fifth house, or the fifth and the ninth, very powerful yoga between friends, very, this is a very powerful chart here. Um, and it, we really need to spend a lot more time on this chart and I haven't really done, spent enough time with Lushan or, um, 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 or we haven't looked at his chart enough on the class, but, um, um, you know the fifth house lore. Well, first of all, we have K two in the fifth house. It's in, um, it's um, it's in a good sign. K two, K two really likes being in Sagittarius. It might even be considered almost exalted there. It's one of the best places for it. It makes it creates deep spiritual love of spiritual knowledge. Um, in this case, Vedic astrology is coming across, across strongly in this. His, his love of K2 and the fifth. And then um, Jupiter Lord of the fifth and the ninth, deep spiritual wisdom, major yoga there, um, Mars. Um, because you want to say anything about this chart, you probably can read it more quickly than I can. No, there's a very, it's a very interesting chart. Lots of yoga is going on in the ninth house, the Lord of the fifth and the ninth, the Lord of the first and the fifth, uh, first and ninth. So it's, it's phenomenal and obviously I, I guess a lot of intuition coming and Jupiter aspecting the ninth house aspect back into the fifth house um, it's, it's it's quite so obviously somebody who's got a lot of good judgment intuition uh, very dharmic um, it's, it's very and a very powerful uh, with sun the lord of the uh, lord leo I mean sun being exalted in the ninth I mean it's, it's Phenomenal, and and, and even uh, Rahu placed in the eleventh, which is not so bad. And with Venus placed in the eleventh, I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it is a remarkable chart. And even you know Saturn in the eleventh in its own sign is actually very powerful. It's actually one of those powerful good things. For, yeah, yeah. It's actually one. It's got Digbala. It actually having Digbala, Iswa. It's it's very powerful. Obviously, Saturn aspects all those planets in the ninth. So that's that's one thing. But again. Um, so there'll be some uh, restriction there, but, uh, but again, quite. Uh, yeah, the, yeah the, the, the biggest challenge, actually, if we were to talk about this chart, is when a planet aspects its sign of debilitation, it's particularly kind of unhappy. So, um, Saturn, you know, Aries is the sign of debilitation. So that Saturn aspect is very powerful. It's impacting Mars and Mercury within a one degree here. So um, that that that's 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 creating some some frustration and decision around spirituality and um, um, you know, possibly some um, some challenges with finances because uh, Mercury is connected to financial houses in in here, but but that might come across more in a Mercury period or something like that. But you know, we'll, we'll have to hear more from Wushan uh, by email. Um, and finally, Jamie, who's taking care of some children today. Um, uh, Taurus rising, fifth Lord Mercury is in the eighth. Um, um, one of the things we did say is that Mercury is one of the planets that does do best in the eighth. Um, um, Mercury owns the second and the fifth. Um, and, and the eighth house is act, aspecting its own sign, the second. Um, and Mercury is the Atmacorica, so it tends, it's bringing up in our Germany classes, we, 
that bring up her, you know, deep life lessons around issues related to mercury. Um, um, from knowing Jamie, she has a very sharp intellect. Um, um, so I, I, I think I think Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth is kind of is creating a deep love of astrology. Remember, wherever the Lord of the Fifth goes, it creates this passion for wherever it lands. So like I have Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth, so it means that I have this love and passion for astrology with which Jamie also has. So that's just coming out of the Lord of the Fifth and the Eighth here. Um, it's also enlivening Sagittarius, the natural ninth sign of the, the natural um, um, sign of the zodiac. And so Sagittarius creates a deep love of religion and philosophy and very kind of dharma doing the right thing. And, and so uh, all those energies, righteousness, um, social act activism, not social activism, maybe politics, are all kind of enlivened um, through the fifth house going in there. Um, any, anybody want to add anything? Okay, so um, we'll have to hear more from Jamie next week. I know she's going to listen to the tape this week. So let's finish the class quickly by looking at Steven Spielberg. Um, if I can open, if I can find him. No, he vanished. Um, Well, we could look at um, okay. Let's look at let's look at Spielberg. Um, obviously, everybody knows Spielberg, director of E.T. and one, lots of other wonderful movies. Similar. Um, he, you know. Gemini is often connected to film, as you know, um, um, just so you know, Gemini is one of the, the, the signs connected to filmmaking. Um, things, you know, film moves quickly, doesn't it? You have to have a kind of a quick mind. Um, Spielberg has um, three planets in the fifth house. Um, he's got Venus in a, in a Malavia Yoga, Venus, Lord of the Fifth and the Fifth. Um, obviously, anytime we talked about if, if Libra owns the fifth house, it can make the person an art, you know, an artist on some level, and certainly filmmakers are artists on some level. Uh, we also end up with um, Lord of the Second and the Fifth, creating a lot of money connecting uh, between from from artistic development. Jupiter is kind of amplifying everything. Anytime you put Jupiter with in Libra, which we have now in transit, it's kind of amplifying the power of filmmaking and the power of artistic creation. Um, even though Jupiter is owning um, uh, uh, the difficult seventh house, which has some some problems, um, he's. Um, what would you think about his discriminative abilities, um, his judgment? Um, it has to be incredibly powerful, right? Um, um, no, anything that I'm missing here in terms of, of, of affliction? Not really. This is a very powerful chart. Obviously, Spielberg, multimillionaire, um, very, very famous man, um, and and uh, wonderful chart. Now, if you looked at it initially, you might say, well, Lord of the Fourth and the Sixth in, in an enemy sign with K2. Than three degrees. Okay, well, um, you know that that might reveal something about his, you know, him, him in, a, in another way, and I'd have to think about what that means. But but you know, we if we look at his um, career chart, which I'm, I just want to see what his career chart looks like. Uh, okay, 
Again, I don't know if this chart's rectified. I assume it's pretty good. Um, Mars is Lord of the First in the Dumbshit in the Dumbshit chart. Um, Saturn retrograde Saturn in the tenth and Leo. Okay. Initially, when I look at this chart, you know, if, if I were doing his, this chart when this man were 25, would I see that much greatness here? There's probably a lot of really great yogas in here that I'm missing. I, it's the first time I really looked at this chart. Because you see anything? So if you look at a D1, you have obviously a lot of the fifth and the fifth. It's creating a lot of different yogas. So you have a yoga between the Lord of the seventh and the fifth, fifth and the um, fifth and the tenth. So basically fifth and the tenth probably would be a more powerful yoga. And of course you have uh, Jupiter. So basically Jupiter moon giving him a lot of recognition. Um, so a bunch of yoga is going in the fifth, totally unafflicted fifth house, like you said, uh, can't see any aspect of any malefic planet. So somebody who has got very creative thinking, enthusiasm, I mean, like what well, you said, you know, and creativity. So, so self-expression and creativity. Right, yeah, fifth yeah. house, this is why this is a good choice. I mean, the fifth house, ultimately in closing our lesson today is about creativity. Um, Jupiter's yeah. amplifying Venus and creativity with all these yogas. This is a good example. Thank you for reminding me about all the yogas here. I, when I dug up this chart, I, I was seeing them, and, I, and now it's really late. Um, um, I think it's very, very, you know, it's a very, very powerful chart. And 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 um, um, with the Lord of the Fifth and the Tenth, um, or the Tenth and the Fifth, and connected to all this, you know, Malavi yoga. So very, very powerful chart. Reminder why sometimes we do have to look at yogas because they can um, kind of, you know, if you get superficial judges, you miss some of these really deep things. So I'm not sure what to do with the Ascendant Lord in, in an enemy sign with K2 pretty closely connected. Um, it does make him very spiritual and very intuitive. Um, um, any thoughts on Mercury and K2 in the, in the six week house? I would say somebody else who had to work very hard, you know, so because Lord of the first and the sixth would mean, uh, I was assuming a lot of hard work and then Mercury with Ketu would give him some intuitive power also, but, uh, and you also have to see more what his health condition is. I have no idea of, um, of, of Spielberg uh, and how his health is, but I would assume that might indicate some issues with the stomach or digestive issues. Um, I don't know at all. Um, I, you know, he, he's in a Venus period now. So, I mean, this, this you know, um, he's, he's still actively filmmaking. If anything, this Malavya yoga um, and creative energy is going to keep keep him going. You know, um, you know, his Venus period just started in 2014. Um, you know, uh, the post will probably get major major academy awards this year um um you know he you know you're right the word I, you have to with, with if you know how 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 much work it takes to make a movie and how many movies he's made and then to run a studio with dreamworks you know unbelievable you know work ethic here and that's really good 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 good, good observation thank you because for your contributions today yeah. i can only see so much sometimes <laughs> Okay, folks, um, you're tired. I know some of you want to watch the Super Bowl. I, I don't really care. Um, but um, 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 I will see you next week. Um, we'll, we'll start with the sixth house next week. Um, depending on how much material I develop, we'll see if we can start the 10th house next week. I, I'm, I'm, you know, we can barely get through one house a week now. So, um, But we can't, the 10th house is just like the most, important Arthur house so we can't ignore it but the sixth house to me is uh, I've got lower the first and the sixth um, Mars and Aries so I we have a personal passion for the sixth house so <laughs> we'll probably see that next week okay folks um, we'll see you next week two more classes left in the houses class um, nakshatra class starting soon and and the remedy class starting in two weeks take care um, I'll stand the line for any f closing sidebars about anything um, and I will stop the tape.